I'm your host, Natasha Paris, and I'm excited because you are in the building with me. You can be anywhere in the world, but you have chosen to be here with me, and I am so humbled and appreciative. Let me tell you about this show. Each and every single week, we continue to empower you to greatness that is truly going to help you, whether you are a person that have experienced a heartbreak, have gone through a divorce, or have endured levels of trauma of any kind, or you're just a person trying to rebuild their life and themselves, and now you are finally ready to live a life full of abundance, joy, and peace, then this show is for you. So with that said, thank you again for being here. I am extremely grateful. I'm excited to be on this journey with you because together we are empowered for greatness. You ready? Let's go. Hello, my friends, and welcome to Empower You To Podcast. I am your host, Natasha Paris, the Empowerment Strategist, and I am so excited today. You know I stay excited. I really, really stay excited. But I'm especially excited because it is our episode 15. Yes, I can't believe that it's been two months since I started this podcast. And God has been so amazing. And let me say this, to those who have downloaded my podcast thus far, not knowing what it was about, but really saying, let me take a listen. Let me see what it is that Natasha Paris is talking about. And I just want to say thank you so very much for taking a chance, listening to the podcast, and really genuinely saying, look, I like this. This is inspiring. This is empowering. Keep going. Keep moving. Keep being consistent. And so I am so grateful for you guys, my friends, those who really believed in what it was that we were doing here on this side of town. Okay. Okay. So with that said, thank you once again. And yes, I'm excited to be here for you, to be here to support you, because what I know for sure is that God has given me this platform to inspire others for greatness. And I know what he's done for me and my life, and I cannot just keep it all to myself. I want to be that Harriet Tubman of this, okay? I want to be the Harriet Tubman of light, change, and just strength and enduring all of what has happened in our lives, the good and the bad, but knowing that those things that have happened in our past has only created who we are, who you are. And so with that said, I want to welcome you to episode 15. And my title of episode 15 is exactly what I needed um, then and I still need now. And hopefully this can really inspire you to keep going. And so the title is Fight for Your Life. You got this. I'm going to say that again, fight for your life, my friends, because it's in the fight. It is in your endurance. It's in your propensity to keep going. It is in that is when you win. I'm going to say that again. It is when you don't give up. When you keep on going, despite what is happening in your life, that's when you see the rewards. That is when you see the fruits of your labor. The seeds that were planted now have come to harvest. And 
that in itself is an amazing thing, my friends. So fight for your life. Because what I know for sure in my own life and in the lives that I've witnessed, right? Because as a licensed therapist, I have heard so many people's concerns. I've entered into the portal of their life. I've been able to see with glasses that they've shared with me, been able to see what their life has looked like, been able to see the childhood that they were raised in, right? That they've endured. I've been able to see the dynamics of their family by the glasses that they've provided for me. And what I know for sure is that even in my own life, fighting is vital. And it sounds a lot, right? You're like, oh my goodness, I don't want to fight. I just want things to be peaceful. I just want things to be easy and even keel. But like I said in my episode 13, it's not always. Life is not as easy and as simple as you running and skipping, running or skipping through the lilies of the field with the sun beaming on your face, right? It's not as as beautiful as that might sound. It's not. So fighting for what you want, fighting through the pain, fighting through the things that have hurt you, fighting to breathe is what is going to take you to the next level. Because what I know for sure and what the good book, you know, I always quote the good book because here at Empower You To Podcast, it is therapy and God meet and greatness is born. Come on now. Therapy plus God, they meet and greatness is born here. And so I cannot, cannot leave out the good book, the Bible, because it's so many great principles, so many great stories, so many great things that will enable us to move towards greatness. And look, if we try to do it ourselves, I would probably be in a straitjacket and probably you too. Okay. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about why we have to fight. Okay. So I'm going to give you five reasons why fighting is necessary, but let's talk before I jump into that, let's talk about what is the fight? What, what are we, what is the fight? What is it that we're fighting for? What I know in my own life is that things have not been smooth. I am a mother that have been divorced. I'm a, a, a once a wife. I was divorced. I am divorced. And it was a fight, right? Trying to make sense out of my life at that time and when I went through the divorce, my friends, it opened up a, oh my goodness, my life. I thought that was the, that was the final one. That was the hard one. Oh my goodness. It just unraveled so many other things. It's like when you have a string hanging from your shorts or pants and you just pull it and you try to cut it and it just keeps pulling. And before you know it, the, the shorts fall apart. <laughs> that's what happened. I'm using that as a real life example. It falls apart. And so the divorce was a string and that string unraveled into me being a mother with two young children on the verge of homelessness. It landed me also losing my job. It just seemed like one thing happened after the next, right? So divorce, lost my job, possible homelessness because my landlord, I owed him three to four months of back rent. In addition, in addition, I had gone through all of my 401k. I had gone through all of my savings to keep myself afloat. And when that money ran out, 
I remember looking at my bank account and it only had $5 in my account. My goodness, even thinking about it, right? I'm so grateful that I'm not there any longer, but it was a very dark place for me, my friends. $5 and I had a three and a half year old and I had a six year old. My goodness, it was, it was, it was horrific because I was like, how am I going to pay my bills? How am I going to feed my children? Am I going to be on the street? But let me tell you, I knew I had to fight because I had babies. I had children that were relying on me. They were depending on me to get it together because I kept crying. I kept crying. And I don't know if you have ever been there where it just seems so bleak and so dark. And you're like, I don't know. What am I supposed to do at this moment? Or you've had a, a a physical ailment and it seemed like the doctors just could not get it together. It just seemed like every treatment that you may have gotten was not working and your diagnosis, your disease, whatever that was, was just getting worse. And it looked like you were knocking on death's door. That darkness that I experienced financially that I was experiencing emotionally and mentally was breaking me down. And I remember my daughter walking up behind me when I was in one of my crying spells. I was just feeling very sorry for myself. And I, I just, I just didn't know where to turn. And I, and let me say this, my ego would not allow me to ask for help. That's another thing, okay? We've talked about it, how when you're in that dark place that you have to ask for help, right? You have, you have to ask for help. But I didn't at the time, I didn't. And I was in that dark place. None of my friends knew I was going through it. It was just really embarrassing. Here I was, a licensed clinician. Why couldn't I find a job? Why couldn't I get it together? And of course, this was before my entrepreneurship journey. But... When my daughter walked behind me, snuck up behind me and tapped me on the shoulder and said, mommy, why do you cry? She was three. It woke me up, my friends. It woke me up to the point where I just was like, wait a minute. Okay, no, she cannot see me crying like this. I can't be broken down like this. So guess what I did? Da 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 da. You know what I said. For those who missed that episode, becoming your own superhero, I had to relinquish control and give it to God. I had to establish a level of faith to know that once I jumped off that cliff, figuratively, okay, jumped off that cliff of faith, knowing that God was my GPS, my God protected services, right? GPS, knowing that God was going to catch me, man, oh my goodness, my friends, it took a lot. But when I put on that cape and I knew I had to jump because my baby was watching me cry and I had to figure it out and I had to ask for help, was when things started to change. So when we talk about fighting, I had to fight through the the embarrassment of asking for help. I had to fight through the hurt and the pain that I was feeling and experiencing in my body because it was impacting me physically. I had to fight my friends. I had to fight through the, wait a minute, why am I in this place mentality? The victim mentality that I had taken on. I had to fight. So when we talk about fighting, 
fighting through the pain when you know it hurts, when you know it's embarrassing, when you know that that ego is not being stroked, that ego is being squashed. That's when things began to change for me, my friends. That's when things began to change. And so what is it in the fight that it gives us, my friends? What is it? What are the things that it provides us? Let's talk about it. The five things. Okay, my friends, the five things. What I know for sure is that there are reasons why we should not give up the fight of life. And I say the fight of life because you're fighting for your life. So the first reason, potential for growth and happiness Life is full of ups and downs. I've talked about it before in my previous podcast episodes. Life is like a roller coaster, right? But the thing is, is that it holds tremendous potential for personal growth. It taught me endurance. It taught me courage because really my friends, courage is being able to do something that you are so super scared to do, but doing it anyways. That is the definition for me is courage. That's the definition of courage for me is being able to do something, even though I'm fearful, even though I'm scared, doing it anyways. That's the definition of courage. So being able to move past that fear and say, I'm going to fight, gives me the opportunity to grow as a person and find happiness and fulfillment. The second reason why you should continue to fight for your life and not give up is because it has an impact, not just on your life, my friends, but on others. Your life has a potential to positively impact other people who are watching. Because what I know and what I've seen and what I've experienced is that when you're staying determined, pushing through those difficult times, pushing, I'm saying it's, I'm going to say that again, being able to push through difficult times, you can inspire and motivate those who are around you. Because let me say this, we are all powerful in our own way. We have power that lives within us. This is why I am labeled or titled the empowerment strategist, because I want you to know that you have power within yourself to make a difference, not only in your life, but in the lives of so many people who are watching you. Because my friends, the people that are watching you are watching to see if there's something that they can relate to. They want to see that you're authentic. And if you notice the people like the Oprah Winfrey's and the Tyler Perry's and the Jeff Bezos, right? Or, you know, the Viola Davis, who I love. Okay. If, if you're listening, Viola, I love you. Okay. One of the things that you've noticed that is consistent and that's a thread that run through all of these amazing individuals is that they have had some difficult opportunities. I wouldn't even say the opportunity, difficult situations in their lives. They've had some moments where you're like, oh my God, how did they get through that? Tyler Perry, right? Sleeping in his car, Oprah Winfrey, being molested as a child and and being really poor. They have some back stories, but look at them now. They did not give up. And so they are the beacons of light that lets you know that if they can do it and become who they are right now in their success stories, you can go through some of the same things and still be able to survive. So you have the power to make a difference in someone else's life. And that in itself is a reason to keep fighting, my friends. That's why I keep fighting. That's why I know that I cannot let go of the fight. I have to keep moving. I have to keep pushing because my babies are watching. 
because you are watching, because God is watching. And because when I look in the mirror, my friends, I want to say, well done. <laughs> my friends, I want to say, well done. And I want God to say, well done. When I get to the, the heavens, right? The, the gates of the, the golden gates. Third reason why you should not give up is because it offers this level of strength and resilience. My goodness, going through challenging experiences builds your strength and resilience. It builds a sense of character because you know, you know what they say about the people with, who have been born with the silver spoon in their mouth. They don't understand struggle. They don't understand endurance. They, they believe that everything should be given to them. But those who have worked for it, oh, they're going to do whatever it takes as long as it's legally and morally correct to stay there. They're going to do whatever it takes. And also it makes for a better person. Right? So if things fall apart or things are not going well, that resilience will cause you to want to stay there. That resilience will cause you to want to fight. And also it equips you to handle future difficulties. Remember, my friends, you are capable of facing adversity head on and emerging stronger from it when you fight. When you fight. Also, number four, pursuit of your dreams and goals. You cannot give up when things are difficult. You cannot give up when it seems like no one is paying attention to you. You're doing all the work and nothing seems to be growing. Well, let me say this. A farmer does not give up. He plants his, his seed and he just waits. But he, of course, he, he toils the soil. He allows it to get great sunlight. He waters it. He does all he or she, right? Farmers can be women as well. He or she does all of those things and they're patient because guess what? They are pursuing their dream of having, you know, great um, greenage, great, you know, being able to sell their products, right? It is that, it is that is the reason why fighting is so important because you have a dream, you have a goal. And if you give up and abandon your dreams and goals, you will never, never see what it could have come to, to fruition and what it would look like. And you would die and you would feel in your grave, okay? My goodness, what would I have accomplished if I just stayed the course? What would my goals and dreams look like if I didn't just give up? So there would be a level of regret there, my friends, a lack of fulfillment in your life, a lack of regret, or I should say a great amount of regret in your life. In addition, what it also does, it gives you an opportunity to pursue your passions. How many of us, my friends, how many people listening to me, you who's listening right now, what are your dreams? What is it that you want to pursue that you find that's difficult? Because if it's difficult, then that means that you're meant to have it. Yes, I know I flipped the script just now. Because oftentimes we say, if it's, if it's easy, oh, it's, we're meant to have it. Yeah, well, that's with regard to love. Yeah, absolutely. You should never fight to get love. It should be easy right? For someone to want to give you love and to treat you with respect. But when it comes to your goals, such as financial goals or career goals, it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy, but I want you to understand my friend. I'm speaking to you. What are your goals and dreams? And if it is difficult, what are you doing to push past that? Are you being consistent? Are you being determined? Are you being resilient? Are you understanding that it is meant for you to have? 
but you have to go through some hurdles because those things are going to build your sense of character. My friends It's going to build your sense of character. In addition, number five, why is it important to continue to fight? Because what it does is it, it allows you to feel this sense of accomplishment that you've done it because look, let's use the example of marathon runners. Oh my goodness. When we see marathon runners, they, at that last stretch, they look like they want to pass out, throw up, give up. But why do they keep pushing? Why do they keep pushing despite the cramps, despite wanting to throw up or maybe even throwing up? Because they know that once they get to that finish line, what's most great is the fact that they finished. What's most great is the fact that they accomplished that goal more than okay, let me focus on the fact that I'm, my stomach hurts or I feel horrible or I feel like giving up. I feel like I'm a pass out. They accomplish that. And it's just like a mother having a child, right? In labor, the pain is so bad, but they continue to push, push through the pain. And when the baby is delivered and they hear the baby crying, I remember that all that pain that you were experiencing, you forget it that quick. Yes, because you've accomplished the goal of giving birth. You've accomplished the goal of running that marathon and getting to the finish line and finishing. You've accomplished the goal by actually completing that education and getting your degree or buying the house or having a family, or having an entrepreneurial career when others say, oh my goodness, right? This is not the path, right? Because it's hard being an entrepreneur. And that's a whole nother episode. Being an entrepreneur is not an easy task. It's not for the weak. It really is not, but it builds your sense of character. So my friends, I want you to know that it is important to remember that everyone's situation is unique. Not everyone's fight is the same. And seeking support, remember, like I initially was not, as I told you my, my story, right? But it was when I made a decision to seek support from loved ones and a professional. That's when things began to change, my friends. And so in my Empower You To School, I teach you, I empower you to go after your goals by removing the barriers of fear, by removing the barriers of nervousness or anxiety to push towards your goals. Yes, my friends, let's sum this up. I love this episode because it speaks volumes to not only myself, but I have an opportunity to speak to you, my friend. Okay, so what are the five? It gives you the potential to grow and find your joy. Second, you become the Harriet Tubman of that, okay? Like I said, I am. You have the ability to impact others like no one, no one on this planet could, right? And you end up becoming that positive light where someone can say, look, my goodness, you went through that. And I... I, I thought I was alone in this and I found out that I'm not. And because you came out of that situation similar to mine, oh, I can do it too. The second, excuse me, the third is, oh my goodness, strength and resilience. Going through a challenging experience builds your character. The Bible talks about it. It talks about building your character. It talks about being able to become the best version of yourself because what it does is it equips you to handle difficult situations because 
if you've gone through one difficult situation, you're going to be like, okay, like a video game, level two, <laughs> because I've passed level one, level three, because I've passed level two. Yeah, this is what life is about. And I don't want you to give up. I want you to push, my friend. I want you to push. Number four, it allows you to pursue your dreams and goals with vigor. It gives you gives you a means to not abandon your dreams, but going after your goals, right? And also, my friends, it aligns you with your values and your aspirations. Five, oh my goodness, you have accomplished the goal. You have accomplished, you have, are now successful because you've gone through that. Yes, yes. And let me say this. As a licensed clinician, as an empowerment strategist, as a mother, as a friend, as a uh, once a spouse, um, as a partner, it is worth it. It is worth it. It is worth it, my friends, for you to understand that fighting that fight for your life is all good. Because what does the Bible says in 1 Timothy 6, 12? It says, fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the internal life to which you were called. Oh my goodness. Here on earth and above about what and which you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. I'm going to say that again. I'm going to read that because that speaks so much. Okay, 1 Timothy 6, 12 says, fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the internal life to which you were called and about which you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Many witnesses, people who are watching you. Having that fight, good faith. Because guess what? It takes faith to see what could be on the other side, my friend. You got to have faith to know that even though things are hard, even though things are difficult, it's going to be amazing on the other side. So yes, I'm so excited about this episode. What is my empowerment affirmation? or I should say my empowerment homework assignment, okay, for you today. Well, I want you to look at your life and say, what is it that I'm fighting and that I'm looking to give up on? And I want you to do this. I want you to stop right now. And I want you to just pause and listen to me carefully, friend. Do not give up. You keep fighting. You keep pushing. Because remember, you are fighting the good fight of faith, knowing that there's something on the other side. And I want you to write down in your journal what happens or what would your life look like if you didn't give up. And I want you to focus on that. So my friends, so my friends, with that said, I want you to be empowered for greatness because what I know for sure is that it is worth it. It is worth it. So with all of that said, I love you guys and I want you to stay motivated, stay positive, and again, be empowered for greatness. Bye. If you are loving this content and our time together as we become empowered for greatness and you want to connect with me more, I would love for you to come and check out my self-empowerment scholars. It's my monthly empowerment sessions where we take all of the materials learned on the podcast and apply it and study it and take it to the next level. So join me over at Empower You, the letter U, to right? The number two dot com forward slash join, or you can text the word empower to 571-464-6511. That's text the word empower to 571-464-6511. 
Also, if you've ever gained an ounce of wisdom or the episode resonated with you, I simply ask that you do four things. The first is I want you to subscribe right now if you have not done so already. The second is I want you to hit that five-star button on your favorite platform. The third is I want to hear from you. I want to hear your feedback. I want to hear how it has resonated for you. In addition, the last, I want you to share this message with someone. It allows us to spread the message of empowerment to those who are desperately in need. So I look forward to seeing you on the next episode and I want you to be what? Empowered for greatness. See you soon. Bye.